Yeah, g'day guys, this will just be a walk around for early winter and just uh, although most of the fruit's been harvested already, uh, most of the large fruit and it'll just be an overview of how things are going so I'll start here in the front yard, we've got the blueberry little blueberry hedge three different varieties it looks like uh, all three of these are going to get um, a good crop this year sometimes one misses a year but uh, this year all three of them look uh, look like they're going to do okay so here's the wonderful pomegranate and we had to net them not for the uh, birds but because they kept splitting so uh, it just caught all the arrows that fell out so we didn't waste them but uh, most of them got eaten it was hard to keep up there was quite a lot of fruit on there same with the gyro persimmon that's uh, fully been harvested now it probably had a hundred over a hundred fruit on it and I think the key for the improvements in these plants is the mulch the hard mulch we just throw everything underneath the trees and the strawberry guava Logan in fruit we just harvested a basket yesterday and left the less ripe ones on the tree it's getting two two crops a year now so the divinity apricot it's gone dormant but it's taken on a very nice shape so high hopes for that next season so we come here we've got all lemongrass and this is a Japanese seedless mandarin and it produced two fruit on this lower branch down here and they were store bought quality in its first season so um, very very happy with that mandarin normally mandarins take a while to get established here but that was two really nice fruit it's got a little dwarf nectarine there we've got a miniola tangelo it's yet to fruit and the dwarf almond is now almost at maximum height so hoping that produces well next year and if I come down here, you'll see how many capsicums are still on, still hanging on to the plant. So uh, we didn't have to buy any capsicum this year. We had a good year for them. So we come around here, we've got a Ben Hur pomegranate. It's gone dormant. No fruit this year, but I'm hoping for its first fruit next season. And we've got an unnamed but grafted. Uh, I don't know what the variety is, but it's a blood orange. And that produced about 20 fruit. And they're just getting ripe now. So you'll notice along this uh, little edge here, I used to have the whole lot with this Mondo grass. But I pulled out most of the Mondo grass and I planted um, 34 uh, Melba strawberry runners. Put a nice long bed in there and I chose Melba because they don't produce many runners and they'll fruit as long as the temperature is above 20 degrees so this front section here with the brick wall um, should extend the season for them so they're the Melba variety they're under plant breeders right so had to buy the runners from a nursery and we've decided to swap this up and grow garlic and shallots in these pots near the wall there get an early start and the dragon fruits along the wall are still putting out growth which I'm trying to discourage just keep the main branches but uh, they seem to love it there so much that they uh, don't want to stop growing and um, got some shallots in there and uh, I moved my little fig into the front yard this is the hottest part of the garden and some more garlic there and if I go underneath the main dragon fruit we've got garlic and broccolini now I don't film down this side section very often but I thought I'd show you today because we've got a ricotto chili and it's really taken off 
and then put on all that growth pretty much in uh, one season and we've put it up against the fence there and as it grew we uh, just threaded it through the trellis that's screwed onto the fence there so we just tucked it around and it grew through because this is quite a windy part of the garden the wind sort of whips through the side of the house there and um, I can't believe how many chilies are on it I mean everywhere you look every branch you lift up they sort of hide underneath so um, they turn red and they're quite hot and nice but that tree hasn't taken a, a back that plant hasn't taken a backward step um, yeah, highly recommend that for Melbourne. That's not getting a lot of sunlight. Just getting a little gap there in the between the fence and the house. And really taken off. And chilies seem to do well in this spot. Uh, I don't know if you can see them, but this is just a store-bought chili that I um, took the seeds from. We planted a few of them here, and uh, they're covered in um, these big, long long chilies I couldn't tell you what the name of them is but that's the uh, Rakoto chili highly recommended got that one from Daly's so uh, we've got our mint containers here I don't put mint in the ground because it seems to just go wild so I leave them in those raids beds this time of year the bok choy and kale does well in these beds some other lettuces some more kale even the ginger down this side section hangs on till late in the season some herbs there some more water loving plants finger lime and we come out here we've got the potted section got some galungal nice uh, big kaffir lime in a pot and just various things we don't eat too much of but still have them there and then we come into the backyard so in the backyard here I've got a nice um, new cooking area set up a few months ago and it just sits there in front of the bananas the bananas have taken off got a nice big bunch up there and down the side of the decking we put the stevia four little plants there and there we have a orange grumi charmer a little black sapote tucked away in amongst the lemongrass there and then we've got a sugarcane hedge here to block the wind next to some Vietnamese mint which looks quite ornamental there so on this side of the decking we've got the majestic babaco and you look how many fruit are on that so the last few winters this went backwards but this winter it's not even feeling it so uh, who knows how many fruits on that and I'll just put my hand near the trunk so you can see the trunk size that's a nice specimen of a babaco for Melbourne and then underneath more garlic again and black sapote colossal variety and uh, I'll give that less protection this year the trunks browned off and around the front of this section we've got two advanced American pawpaws we've got a Lewis Glowinski on the left and a Pennsylvania gold on the right and that's an overview of uh, 
that section. So in this section we've got some celery, freshly planted, and here we have a nice uh, fajoa. And this one, this year, I'll trim the lower branches off, which will open up all that area for pots and things, and we'll just leave the top ground grow out because with fajoas you just shake the tree and the fruit will fall down so it doesn't matter if the tree gets a little bit tall and that's next to one of my favorite trees the Kempong white sapote which has probably got a million flowers on it and a lot of fruit under there if you have a look under here and this year they're actually full size, so uh, trunk's getting nice and thick. And I'll just stand back and show you. So that's the Kampong, and they can get as big as it wants there. Which is why I planted in that spot. So we've just got a few garden beds along here. Plum that's uh, still hanging on to its leaves. Here's our main persimmon tree, Fuyu. Still got a few left, but they all got eaten. So that's turned into a nice tree. It really looks nice with a few fruit hanging on. The pepino. We've been getting a few, but the rats. A few rats around seem to like the uh, pepino as soon as they get ripe. But that just keeps that corner looking nice and green. Another younger persimmon there. It's meant to be a fuyu, but the fruit was so sweet. I'm wondering if it's uh, another variety. It was extra sweet. So dwarf uh, Santa Rosa plum. And our two potted lemons. Because so, lemons are so readily available here, I didn't want to uh, waste any in ground space with lemons, so I just left these two in pots. And uh, they give us more than enough, especially at this time of year. And full size fruit, and it's uh, flowering as the other fruit is uh, getting ripe. So we've got a little potato bed here. I just want to show you a, uh, a rarer tree behind this um, pepino. Here we've got a wajibu from Doug in Queensland. So it's similar looking to a jibodikaba and I'm hoping that fills in that corner there. Alright, so here's my dwarf citrus row and the miniature peach. So this is an imperial and an emperor. And the emperor didn't fruit this year. But the imperial is covered in fruit. It's having its best year. So it took a while for these to find their feet, but um, I'm glad I persevered with them. I was going to give up. For a while but now now they've uh, settled in both got a nice shape on them there and i think the mulch was the key at the bottom there i built up the edge of the garden bed so i could add more mulch and also an in-ground worm farm so we come across here we've got a uh, i'm pretty sure it's a valencia dwarf and it doesn't look like there's many fruit on it this year until you look underneath when you look underneath it's actually got quite a few so uh, just had a quick guess there I'd say there's 20 fruit on there or more and that tree's only it looks like it's under a meter tall and it's next to the big producing miniature peach 
which is starting to lose all its leaves. And also in this row we've got a bed of alpine strawberries around a, hopefully it's a lead jujube. Another bed of strawberries, this is a Chandler variety. And then my biggest Jibodi Kaba, Sabara. It's getting quite a good trunk. And then at the back there we grow long melons. And there's only one or two left on there now. In that corner there we've got a red chatut mulberry and two magnificent avocado trees. That's the bacon. The flowers are starting to burst on that. And I'll show you the hass, which has got some really good fruit on it. Uh, I don't need to net it anymore because there was a rat. The rats were attacking them, but they seem to leave it alone now. But I left the nets on there anyway, but we're getting some uh, really good fruit on there now. This tree doesn't feel the cold or the heat anymore. I'll have a look at that. That's bigger than a store-bought hat. And I think the key to that was planting it on a huge mound and just constantly giving it yard mulch. So any, any branches I prune off or any um, lemongrass we trim, banana leaves, um, even big branches like that, just gets thrown underneath these trees. And uh, I think that was the key to getting so much fruit so early. And uh, hopefully the bacon puts out a lot of fruit this year too. That's the two avocado trees. I'll utilise this fish pond area better in the coming years, but this year we just grow the sawtooth uh, coriander in here. And uh, a few other herbs. This one down there is called uh, ma'om. And it extends, extends the uh, season the humidity that's created in there so across here we've got a nice longan and this one i've deliberately pulled into that direction to uh, shade the pond and also it's the only space where it can grow because i want to keep that area clear for the long melon wompy uh, is looking nice. Mark from Melbourne Subtropic Tropic Fruits asked me to uh, squash the leaf and smell it. And if it smelled like a curry leaf, it would be uh, a guy Sam, not a seedling, as I thought. So that's probably a guy Sam. And then over here we've got the yin pei, and then more of them capsicums hanging on. I weed matted in between these garden beds, which is getting too hard to mow. So um, just leave that like that. Here we've got a Cara Cara orange, another herb bed. Here's the pomelo, dropped all its fruit, but really put on some height. It's almost two meters now. So maybe we'll get more fruit on that next year. Here we have a large leaf Jabodi Kaba. Some herbs. And then a new area down here behind the shed. Where we're gonna grow melons on that next year. And then in the back corner there is a red ball lychee. And that's still putting on growth, believe it or not. I think the shelter is the key. So the Isai Kiwi Berry it made it to the top this year and it's only got a few leaves left hanging on so next year hopefully that will give us some fruit. I'll put that in a 
a pot on top of some bricks so when I do give it a bigger pot I can just remove the bricks because it's attached itself to the trellis if that pot was on uh, ground level I wouldn't be able to go any bigger so I'll be able to get another pot underneath that and then cut away the existing pot maybe in a year or two I decided to plant this um, dwarf Nagasaki Wazi Loquat. I'm glad I did because it's uh, found its feet. So I think they graft that one onto Quince stock. I got that from Daly's. And all that lighter coloured growth is new, so um, that'll give it a bit of a head start for this season. A little bed in between there and then I'll show you the macadamia this is the variety lots of nuts and it's just grown into a big beanstalk really a really tall straight tree probably because of the support I gave it but I didn't want it growing to the left or right because that's that's a pathway so I thought I'd rather it grow up and then spread a crown and it'd be a nice entrance to the back garden walking under the macadamia tree. Here's the asparagus bed. I think in a week I'll cut all them back, fertilize and mulch. Yeah, that's usually the first thing to wake up. That's an overview of that section. So the sugar cane still going great. I've just got to buy a juicer, manual juicer. And then opposite side of the path, we have the yellow cherry guava. And most of the fruit's been harvested. Some of it was quite good size. But it's still hanging on to some green ones. And I've espaliered that on a uh, trellis, similar to the ricotto chili and for me that was the key because it gets pretty windy up that corridor there so uh, since I've started tying it off to that trellis it's um, really improved so you already saw the winter waiting room on the previous video so I'll just skip through that and show you the curry leaf tree Looking great there in the sun. Here we've got the Taiso Litchi. Still looks like it's uh, in the middle of summer. Look at the beautiful leaves on that. And stepping back there, we've got um, coffee, three different varieties. Two Arabica varieties there, next to a Moringa. Can now reach the top of the fence. Another dwarf coffee, Akai. There's a gap there. And uh, finger lime. And a black roomy charmer. So this was good timing with the sunlight. The sun's come out just at the right time to uh, film the Jabodicaba hedge. There's the yellow there. It's got a few things coming out, but I don't think it's flower buds in there. I think it's um, leaf shoots, but uh, fingers crossed. So all the oak leaves that blow down the street, I just blow them into this bed here. So I've got a few varieties of uh, Jabodi Kaba there. Doing well for winter. And uh, the last one's the giant, it's my favourite looking. And the only protection I'm giving them is this um, little bit of shade cloth there to protect from the gust of wind. Come across here, we've got um, a dwarf Tahitian lime putting out its first flowers. And 
here's the sugar baba mandarin which i highly recommend just gives um tiny little uh seedless fruit and really sweet great for the kids and just the last uh, strawberry bed thanks for watching guys uh, just wanted to say i've been moving the camera very slow through the whole video and um apologies if you see any shaking or jerkiness to the footage my phone has started to play up for some reason so i've tried to switch to an sd card this time instead of uh, internal storage and uh, i'll see if it comes out any better when i upload this one but uh, i'm in the market for a new phone so uh, if it's if this video has been shaky it won't be a permanent thing i'll get it sorted cheers and here comes the sun low on the horizon beautiful